Good morning, Somerville family. We are so excited that you are joining us today in person and on our live stream. Here are some ways that you can get connected this week to our church and our church family. We are going to be reaching out to our community at the Somerville Christmas Parade this year. We're asking for gingerbread cookie donations to hand out at the Somerville Christmas Parade downtown Somerville. If you would like to donate gingerbread cookies, please make sure that they are individually wrapped. You can place your donations in the bin in the welcome lobby no later than December 4th. Our Strengths and Things Connect group will be having their next jam session November 21st at 6.30 p.m. in the zone. Come hang out for a guitar jam session and food. Sign up by November 17th in the welcome lobby. We will be having a Thanksgiving celebration following service November 24th. Sign up start today in the welcome lobby. We will have a turkey provided by the church, but we're asking that everyone coming bring a side dish or a dessert. Sign up in the welcome lobby and let us know what you'll be bringing. On November 17th, we will also have 200 small pies here at the church with a card so that you can invite someone who does not attend our church to join us for our Thanksgiving celebration. Those small pies will be here and ready for you to pick up on November 17th. Well, that's it for today's announcements. If you miss anything, just check out your bulletin, our website, and Facebook page. I hope you came today ready for God to move in your life like never before. So let's stand and get ready for worship. Praise the Lord. So good to see you here this morning. It feels like fall today. I'm thankful for that. I like that. Some of you people say, well, you cold weather people can go on. Well, I like it. I like the change of seasons. I'm thankful that the Lord, he's mindful of us and he does that for us. But I was with the young people yesterday. And when I spend time with the young people, I realize I'm not as young as I once was. Really. Uh, Friday, they went uh, to youth winter retreat, and um, they're doing good. I think several have, in our group itself, several have gotten saved, and they've recommitted their lives to the Lord, and so praise the Lord for that. And you know, I'm here this morning, and I've come to just worship the Lord. I want to worship Him. I want to worship Him in spirit and in truth with clean hands and a pure heart you know he he's so good he's so good and I I cannot praise him enough but there is coming a day but he's gonna come back he's coming back for his people and I want to be one of those no I'm gonna be one of those I'm going to be one of those because I've made up my mind and I've chosen that I'm going to worship the one true king. And behold, he's coming. Are you ready for him to come? You know, sometimes we want to keep living this life. We kind of get comfortable. We kind of like the way our world around us feels comfortable. But this is not our home. He's coming. He's coming. Are you ready to meet him? Are you ready to see him? I'm ready to see him. What a day it's going to be when I do.
like Jehovah. There's no God 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 like Jehovah. Jackson's basketball team is here. He's not here today. <laughs> He's not here today, but we're glad to have you. And I don't know if you know this or not, but you're in a Pentecostal church this morning, just so you know. But you know what? Miss Cherie, you play that again. Because there's no God like our God. We get a little excited about it sometimes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because I'm going to tell you right now, as a parent of a basketball player, and as a, as a, a I'm not a sports fan, <laughs> as my husband's a sports fan, and those of you who know, some of you were rooting on those Gamecocks last night, right? Those, that sports team doesn't deserve my praise. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with rooting for our team. But there is something wrong when we root for our team and we can't come in church on Sunday morning and get a little excited about what God has done for us. There's no God like Jehovah. 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 we serve a living God, folks. I was thinking just a little bit ago that no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. And do you know a lot of stuff comes against you as an individual in this life? But God said that no weapon is going to form against you will prosper. So that means one thing to Kenny. I'm a pilgrim passing through. That means one day I'm going to turn around, Sister Courtney, and I'm going to look behind me, and I'm going to have, the Lord's going to have brought me through that situation, irregardless of what it is. Ushers, if you would come on. Our offering this morning is going to go for our land and development. So let the Lord bless you as you bless him in giving this morning. If you're joining us via the Internet, we just want to say thank you for allowing us to come into your home this morning. And just let God bless you this morning. Brother Justin, if you would bless the offering, please, sir. Yes, Father. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. the Lord. I like that. 2 Corinthians 1 and 3 says, all praises belong to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he is the Father of tender mercy and the God of endless comfort. All praise belongs. Every single praise belongs to him.
worship him he's due every praise even here on this earth but there's coming a day when he comes back or when I die either way I don't know which one's going to come first but I'm going to worship him forever the Bible tells us the angels cry out worthy 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 holy 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 Because God sent Jesus Christ to be my Savior. I have everything to live for, but I also have everything to die for. Because in Him, there's no death. In Him, there's only life. And I thank Him this morning because He made that way. Because God sent Jesus and He made the way for me.
he's the one today that's worthy of all of our praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Lord, we just thank you today. Thank you for the presence I felt since I entered the building, God. Lord, thank you for every person sitting in a seat today, God, standing here in your presence. Lord, you're wanting to do something among us today. And Lord, open our hearts and prepare our hearts, God, for everything you have for us today. That Lord, in this place, we can truly say when we leave today, God, that we gave you all of our praise, all of our worship. Your name is worthy, God. Jesus, the name above all names. We just thank you and praise you today. Hallelujah. If you got your Bibles, we're going to go quickly. She continues to play just for a moment. Jeremiah chapter 48. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 11. The Bible said, Moab hath been at ease from his youth. He hath settled on his lees and hath not been emptied from vessel to vessel. Neither hath he gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remained in him and his scent not changed. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that I will cause him to wander and shall empty his vessels and break their bottles. Lord, today I just pray, God, in this room, God, Lord, in this place, I pray that the word of God would go forth with freedom today, that it would accomplish, Lord God, what you wanted to accomplish, that it wouldn't return void, God. But Lord, I pray, God, just move in this place, God. Lord, we thank you for this time, God. What a wonderful time that we've come to be able to worship our Savior, our King. Lord, we just thank you today. You're our healer. You're our provider. God, everything that we need is wrapped up in who you are today. And Lord, help us, God, as we continue, Lord God, in this service, God, that we will worship you, Lord. Thank you for your word today. All of God's people said, Amen, amen. Thank you for joining us online. Look at somebody next to you. Tell them it's good to be here today. Amen. We're glad you're here. Amen. I'm glad you're here today. We uh, took a little field trip last week. Uh, you were in good hands. I think Brother Kenny uh, did an awesome job here. And uh, with everything going on in his family last week, we were able to go off. We had uh, run a few nights for revival, Friday, Saturdays. And Sunday at Willisburg, Kentucky, but I can truly tell you today, nothing could be finer than to be in Somerville, South Carolina this morning. Amen. 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 We're glad you're here. It's good to have the JV boys basketball team with us today visiting. And uh, amen. I know we've got about 25 young people at youth retreat today. Uh, again, we've had some saved, God moving in a mighty way in Myrtle Beach, and they'll be back. You just pray safely today, but we're looking forward to their safe return. But God's been doing some great things among our young people. You know, I was thinking over the last several weeks and all that has unfolded in our lives and in this country, I have found that there are times in this Christian walk that you can wonder what's going on. You know, we ask a lot of times. I, I ask this question all the time. Lord, when are things going to settle down? We've seen four funerals in four weeks in this church, and we've seen a lot of things unfolding in our country. I've heard a lot about heaven. I've even preached to us about having that eternal mindset. But I want us to understand this morning Heaven is certainly our great eternal hope. Ruling and reigning with Christ, seeing uh, uh, Him and living in a new heaven and a new earth in that eternal state of His glory, uh, uh, that's a wonderful thing. But Christ did not die and rise again so we could just go from here to mansions. He saved you and put you in a process to make you like Jesus. Folks, heaven's a wonderful thought. But we have no idea what heaven is going to be like. We have some short descriptions uh, in the scripture. In our mind, we can imagine things. But we truly don't know all that heaven will be like. Heaven is 
I believe, more real and more practical than I think we can even uh, imagine. You know, the Bible tells us, I hath not seen nor ear heard nor even entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for him that lo- them that love him. We still don't know what it all consists of. All I know is that it takes a lifetime of God working on us to get us ready for heaven. So how does God do that? I've told you many times every word in this Bible points to Jesus. Every parable, every story, every type and shadow uh, of the Old Testament, every miracle, uh, everything in the Scripture points to Jesus. Uh, So if that is our goal, uh, if that's God's goal, uh, to be made uh, likened into His image, uh, to become more and more like Jesus Christ, uh, how does God do that? If you go to the story... In Luke chapter 9, where Jesus fed the 5,000, understand that was just the men. That didn't include the women and children. It says he took the loaves and the fishes. Now, I want you to see how interested God is in math. You know, a lot of times we're not too interested in math. Got any math scholars in here? It wasn't my subject, okay, in school. Uh, uh, But I want you to see how interested God is in math. He took the fish. So he subtracted from this little boy's lunch. Then it says he blessed the fish. So that means he added to it. He added his blessing to it. Then he broke the bread and the fish. Now that's called division. Then it said he distributed it. That's called multiplication. So he subtracted, he added, he divided, he multiplied, and then he had a remainder left over. Twelve baskets full is what the Bible said were left over. And understand this morning... This is the process uh, of the Christian life. Uh, God takes you out of darkness. Uh, He places his blessing upon you. Uh, Then he breaks you. Uh, Then he distributes you. Uh, uh, The problem is uh, we want to stop at the addition part, at, at the blessing. We're glad he took us. We're glad that he blesses us. But we want to be blessed again and again and again. And and God doesn't stop there. He moves on with the process of breaking us. And that's hard. No, nobody prays for that. You ask somebody how they're doing, most of the time, uh, especially around here, they'll say, man, I'm blessed. Uh, uh, Brother Kenny always adds in that highly favored. I, I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, rarely do I ask somebody how you doing and they say, Pastor, I'm broken. I'm broken and about to die. Because the whole process of God breaking you is to crucify and kill this old flesh and rid you of everything that is unlike Jesus. Even Paul said about communion in 1 Corinthians, this is the Lord's body that was broken for you. It was broken. It was crucified. He emptied himself for you. So all of you today who feel like your life right now just seems to be like a tornado, you're just weary with the whole thing, let me tell you, We need to quit giving uh, the devil all the credit. Sure, we wrestle against spiritual wickedness in high places. We wrestle against things that we don't see that the enemy has dispatched uh, to try to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, But we need to realize uh, what we're facing uh, is the work of God in our lives. Uh, Now, I might not get too many amens over that this morning uh, because some of you uh, have already declared uh, that the devil is about to kill me. But you need to understand as a child of God, he can't touch you. Everything that happens in your life is under the divine allowance uh, and the power of a sovereign God. Uh, So whatever you are facing right now, I'm going to tell you today, it is of the Lord. Uh, It's an area of your life uh, that he sees a need to be strengthened or repaired uh, and sometimes even removed. uh, And none of us like it. Because we feel unspiritual. In those times of God's breaking, we we think, man, where is the glory? We say, "Uh, why why can't it be like when I first got saved? That's when the Lord took you. 
That's when the Lord added his blessing. I remember when I got, first got saved, it was all new, man. I was a new creation in Jesus Christ. People said, I don't even look the same. I don't look the same now. <laughs> but it was all new. Man, I gave my heart and life to Jesus Christ. I surrendered everything. He changed the way I talked. He changed the way I looked. Uh, he changed the way I acted. Uh, he changed the things that I did. Everything changed. I met my wife. Wasn't even looking for her. Just ran right into her. I was looking for Jesus. Man, ran right into her. Man, things were great. Things were new. Things were fresh. I had met the Puckett family. All of a sudden, we were immersed in youth ministry. Things were just so exciting. Uh, I, I, I had this new life. The Lord had called me. He took me into places I had never been. He added blessing after blessing. Uh, uh, you know, Courtney, she thought she got a hunk. Uh, now she's got a chunk. Uh, uh, but, but, you know... <laughs> but there has been a process over the years of the Lord breaking me, emptying me out of me so that he can multiply and send me out. And right now, he wants to empty our vessels of complacency. I ran across an odd scripture this week. Jeremiah chapter 48, verse 11 and 12. Now here in our text, to understand this is really all you need to know, God is reprimanding Moab. And the Bible says Moab has been at ease from his youth. Meaning he's never really had any responsibility. He doesn't know anything but comfort and ease. And it goes on to say he has settled on his dregs and has not been emptied from vessel to vessel, nor has he gone into captivity. Therefore his taste remained in him and his scent had not changed. Now, does that sound odd to you today? Some of you are already wondering, where's he going with all of this? You see, the Lord's talking about someone who has decided to take it easy. He's talking to someone uh, who, who's not been moved or, or motivated or hasn't been stung or convicted to do any more for God. Uh, he's not been emptied from vessel to vessel, it says. Uh, and folks, uh, that's the nature of us as human beings. Uh, when we're not challenged, uh, we get idle. So when God sees that you have become comfortable uh, uh, and maybe that problem in your life for a time uh, has been solved uh, and all of a sudden you're not praying uh, the way you were praying when you were in trouble. Uh, you're not reading uh, his word the way you were reading and studying it when you thought uh, that you were uh, in the middle of a disaster. Uh, uh, but God moved uh, and God worked those things out. Uh, and what has happened uh, is you become easy and settled again. Uh, the dregs are moving to the bottom uh, and settling again. And God says, uh, I'm going to have to pour you uh, into another vessel. Uh, the bottle needs to be stirred up. Uh, uh, that which brings flavor and enjoyment uh, needs to come from the bottom uh, and get stirred up uh, 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 and God uh, picks you up and he starts pouring you out. And all of a sudden you're saying, I can't believe something else has happened. It feels like it's just one thing after another. Man, it's the life of a pastor. I think when I get all the holes plugged and me and the Lord's been on the same page uh, and I've been praying and fasting and doing all these things uh, and I see uh, blessings fall on people and I see healing and improvement in the lives of our people uh, uh, and I think, man, uh, it's a good week. Uh, I can just settle down uh, and get some rest. That's what people tell me all the time. Pastor, you, you need some rest. Brother Tommy told me the other night, he said, you look tired. I said, well, I kind of am tired. But there are times when I think, Lord, it just seems like it never ends. It's one thing after another. If it ain't ticks, it's fleas. There's no end to it. But God is saying, I'm not allowing you to become comfortable. Because if you do, you don't grow. You don't seek me. You don't depend on me. 
So you're going to be poured from one vessel to another. I'm going to keep you stirred up uh, as long as you live. Uh, now, I don't know much about uh, a bottle of wine this morning. I'm not real familiar with all of that. Uh, but I do know uh, if that cork is stuck down in the neck uh, of that wine bottle, uh, you can't smell the wine uh, and you can't taste the wine. It means, which means Moab got so comfortable, he had sealed up his life and nobody could see any results or fruit by the hand of God. His scent was all bottled up inside of him. And it said his taste had not changed. That's why God, I believe, is saying, I didn't save you and fill you with the Holy Spirit for you to just tighten the cap on your life and back out of the battle and say, no, I, he, he's saying, I'm going to pull the cork out. I'm going to pour you from vessel to vessel so somebody can benefit from what I have done in your life. God is saying, this is not about you. This is about me working through you. Does that make sense to anybody today? Folks, God is wanting to break our bottle of comfort and ease. I told you several weeks ago, uncomfortable Christians, I have found are happy Christians. An uncomfortable church is a happy church. When I walk into a staff meeting with our leaders, I think sometimes, they're thinking, what is he going to come up with next? Uh, what, what are we going to have to do next? Uh, but I have found uh, as we head things off uh, and pray and seek the Lord, uh, yeah, we end up doing some things that are uncomfortable. Uh, it stretches us all the time. Uh, but you know what else I found, Brother Kenny? When we're stretched uh, and God's moving and pulling uh, and pouring us out from vessel to vessel, I have found it stirs something up inside of us. Uh, it's a sweet flavor. Uh, it's a sweet aroma. Uh, it gets Gets us excited and stirred up to do more and more and more for him. When you find a comfortable Christian, you'll find a Christian life without meaning. You'll find a Christian that all they want to do is just go to church on Sunday. You'll find a Christian with no scent, no taste. They make no difference for the kingdom of God. The devil's not afraid of them. Hell doesn't tremble when they pray. Nothing seems to ever happen spiritually. They're not a factor in kingdom warfare and spiritual battles because they have settled down. You can't see any difference in their life. They affect nobody. They help nobody. But I'm telling you today, it's only a matter of time. You can stir yourself up. And if you don't stir yourself up, God will stir you up. It's a time, I'm saying, church, to take hold of the Lord. Uh, Paul told Timothy, stir up the gift of God uh, which is in you. Uh, he was saying, don't just sit there. Don't just get comfortable. God has more. Uh, you're not home yet. Uh, you're not in heaven yet. Uh, you haven't sucked your last breath on this earth yet. Uh, folks, nobody retires from Christianity. Uh, hey, we have some wonderful saints of God uh, sitting in this room today. Uh, but I'm telling somebody today, uh, it's time to put your boots back on. Uh, somebody needs to unsheath the sword of the spirit again and pick up the shield of faith and realize the battle on this earth is not over until we leave this world. It's a time to fight the good fight of faith and lay hold on eternal life. God wants to pour out of our vessel complacency. He goes on to say in verse 12, Therefore behold the day is coming, says the Lord, that I shall send him wonders. Or wine workers is what that means. Those are people who appear to be helpers, but they're not. God says, I'm going to send him wanderers who will tip him over, empty his vessel, and break his bottle. You see, some of you are going to come in contact with people in your life who are going to tip you over. Some of you are going to go through situations that are going to tip you over. God's saying, I can't let you sit there like that. I'm going to tip you over. 
I'm going to empty your vessel. You're going to empty out yourself. I'm going to raise you up. I'm going to stir you up again. So this is not just religion. You don't just belong to a church. I'm going to do something inside of you that will cause you to become a spiritual warrior again. That will cause you to have a prayer life again. That will make you busy about the business of the kingdom again. Who does it, folks? God is the one who does it. Do you think I'm an ease here at Summer? bill all the time I know I know you know people say preachers y'all just y'all get up by 10 o'clock in the morning and just eat chicken and rye I know I know all the old jokes brother Joey reminds me of them every week we need a new preacher all these things I'm gonna tell you I'm more uncomfortable now than I've ever been you say what brother John it's a good uncomfortable You see, I begged God before I left Alabama. I said, Lord, whatever you're depositing in my heart right now that I feel like you're doing, why can't I do it here? Man, Lord, we're sitting at the biggest intersection in town. I've got a building that'll seat triple of what we're running now. Lord, why can't we just do it here? This is a good place. You know what the Lord seemingly spoke to me? He said, John, you've become comfortable. It is a good place, but I'm going to take you to a God place. And I'm going to pour you out from vessel to vessel. I'm going to empty out your vessel of complacency, and I want to empty out your vessel of carnality. Remember that lady that heard Jesus was having dinner at Simon's house? You see, it was a dinner party of religious men. But Jesus had touched and changed this woman's life. And as he is reclining at the table, the Bible tells us she just eased into the room and she got near his feet and she started weeping profusely. She was weeping because of what the Lord had done for her. Jesus said, uh, uh, those that have been forgiven much, uh, they're going to be thankful for much. Her tears, she began to wash the dust off of his feet. And then all of a sudden she begins to dry his feet with her hair and she pulls out this alabaster box of expensive ointment and perfume. And then all of a sudden she broke the top off of it and she began to pour it all over Jesus' feet. And the sin of that filled the room to the point those old hard-headed religious men said, you know what, Uh, that's ridiculous. Uh, That's a waste. Uh, That's a year's salary uh, that she's pouring out right there at his feet. Uh, Don't you know what that woman's done? Uh, uh, Don't you know she shouldn't even be in the room with us? Uh, 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 If he were a prophet, he would know that that woman is a sinner. Uh, Not only that, uh, the expensive perfume, uh, that could have been used for something else. But Jesus, Jesus saw it as an offering to himself. He said, you fellas just leave her alone because she has done what she could do. She realized, hey, I could keep this in this bottle if I keep it for years. Listen, it won't do anybody any good. But I can't think of a better way than to break it open right now. I'm going to pour it at the feet of Jesus. I'm going to praise him with everything that I have for all the good things he's done for me. Uh, so without hesitation uh, she broke that box open and she poured it out before the Lord and you know what happened the aroma filled the air I told you a few weeks ago if you start going through the Old Testament and all of the meticulous scriptures in Exodus and Leviticus about Sacrifices. God tells them, I want you to take an animal. I want you to kill that animal. I want you to cut him open. I mean, it gets graphic. I want you to pull his insides out. I mean, this ain't too graphic for you. You, I got some deer hunters in here. Y'all do this every weekend. I had some in revival that were off doing it while I was preaching. Oh, that's gross, Brother John. How's that pleasing to God? Pulling the insides of an animal out. Taking off 
fat in certain parts of the kidney and the liver and putting it over to the side, then burning that carcass and burning that flesh. Was that really a sweet-smelling savor to the Lord? Yes, it was. You see, we're the ones who say it's disgusting. We're the ones who say, how can that be pleasing to the Lord? Well, God was saying, hey, number one, you've obeyed me. Number two, it's a symbol of that I want your insides pulled out and I want your flesh burned up. And he's saying right now, I'm going to help you do it. I'm going to break you open. I'm going to pull you out of you. I'm going to lay it on the altar of sacrifice and I'm going to let the aroma waft up into the heavens uh, and when I see that you are empty of yourself and you are full of me, uh, when I see that your flesh uh, is dead and burned up, uh, then I'll recognize that somebody has offered me uh, a sweet smelling scent. Uh, you know, that's what happens uh, when you're baptized with the Holy Ghost. Uh, that's what happens uh, when the Holy Spirit fills you up. Uh, you come to a place uh, where you are empty of yourself. Uh, you are a consecrated vessel and all of a sudden that's what happens. Uh, God says hey uh, you're empty of yourself uh, and here's what I'm going to do. Uh, I'm going to fill you up with me. Uh, I'm going to fill you with power. Uh, I'm going to fill you with the things that you need every single day. Uh, uh, folks I'm telling you uh, when God says I see your flesh is dead and burned up uh, then I'll recognize that somebody has offered me a sweet smelling scent and it is pleasant in my nostrils uh, and it fills the halls of heaven for eternity. You see, the things we highly regard, God ignores. The things that we think are undesirable and unnecessary, God honors. I can't give you a better illustration of what makes God say that's beautiful than for you yourself to be broken and cut open and relieved of self and have all of your earthly desires burned up before him so you want nothing and no one but Jesus Christ alone. He wants to empty your vessel of carnality. And he wants to empty your vessel of complaining. Understand today, you can sire the taste. You can putrefy the aroma by one thing. Complain. You see, when we recognize it's God that is at work in us, cleaning us out, it's God who's helping us to crucify our flesh. He's using our various problems. Uh, uh, yes, He even uses people. Uh, we, we, we just still think, well, well, man, Brother John, my family's just so messed up. Whose isn't? Everybody's got some stuff going on in their family. Well, my business, Brother John, it's, it's messed up. My life's all to pieces. And instead of recognizing that God is fixing me, this is God healing me. Uh, it's God who took me and blessed me. It's God who's now breaking me so that my life will be poured out as a testimony uh, to the very family that seems to be killing me. Uh, uh, this is the God uh, in his holy place uh, doing his holy work. Uh, and folks, I'm telling you, that is a sweet aroma to God uh, uh, unless we complain and refuse to praise him for it. You see, the Spirit of God has been wrapped up in this ball of flesh and feelings. I was about to say pinch the person next to you, but I don't want to start something today. <laughs> pinch yourself. If you pinch hard enough, it hurts. See, you're wrapped up in a ball of flesh with feelings. God himself, right in the middle of all this flesh uh, and our unpredictable feelings uh, that they, they change every single day of our life, uh, uh, he has put into us the Holy Spirit. Now, a sinner is always motivated by flesh and feeling. But the Holy Spirit has come 
inside of us. And when we see God working, breaking us, it's so hard because we're cluttered with flesh and feelings. It's hard to lift our hand and say, thank you, Jesus, for this situation. It's hard sometimes to say, God, I give you the glory and the praise. You see, the Holy Spirit doesn't change. He's joy. He's life. He's peace. He's not moved by our circumstances. He is God manifested in the Spirit. So that unchanging joy stuck down on the inside of this ball of flesh and feelings, it has to find its way through it all to stand in front of God and say, bless your holy name. And there's only one way for that to happen. There's only one way to make a way through all of our flesh and all of our feelings. And that's to say hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you're doing, Lord, but I'm going to give you glory for it. I'm not going to lay down. I'm not going to complain. I'm going to bulldoze my way through flesh. I'm going to bulldoze my way through feelings. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be on my mouth for God is great and greatly to be praised. Thank you, Jesus. I don't know what you're doing, but I'm going to give you glory for it. Praise and thanksgiving. Man, did you, did you see what happened this morning? In just a few moments, all of the flesh... And all of the mess just got pushed aside for a minute this morning. And people begin to get happy. And people begin to rejoice in the Lord. Folks, praise and thanksgiving escorts us through our feelings. Praise and thanksgiving will let us push it all aside and stand before the throne of grace. And our spirit witnesses His spirit that we are children of God. It's always been that way. Remember blind Bartimaeus? He heard Jesus was coming by. And the crowd was all around Jesus. Flesh all around Jesus. Feelings all around Jesus. Just one big mass of flesh and feelings. And blind Bartimaeus said, who is that? Somebody said, that's Jesus. Blind Bartimaeus said, hey, wait a minute now. That Jesus? Hey, I heard he can heal the blind. They said, shh, shh, be quiet, be quiet. He said, in Luke chapter 18, Son of David, have mercy on me. They said, be quiet. Jesus, Son of David, I don't know where you are, but have mercy on me. I can't see you right now, but have mercy on me. I hear the crowd. I smell the crowd, but I'm a blind man, and I'm looking for the Son of God to be my healer. And every time they heard him, told him to hush, he got louder and louder. And when Jesus heard the desperation of that man who pressed through the flesh, who pressed through the feelings, he stopped the flesh. He stopped the feelings. He walked walked through it uh, and said, what do you want me to do for you? He said, heal me, Lord. I'm blind. He said, you're healed. Get up and go home, blind Bartimaeus. See, you got to forget about flesh. You got to forget about feelings. You got to forget about what it looks like. Man, we get wrapped up in all that. Oh. And you got to cry out, Jesus, Jesus, blessed be your name forever. Folks, I'm not going to surrender to my feelings. I will not surrender to my flesh. I am a child of God. Amen. Think about that woman with the issue of blood. She came to Jesus and once again she's surrounded by flesh. And feelings. He was always surrounded. But she said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment, if I could just brush against him, I know that I will be made whole. But she had to push through flesh. She had to push through feelings. And when she finally did brunch against him, he stopped. He said, who touched me? You see, he can be surrounded by flesh and feelings. But he knows 
when faith moves through a crowd and touches him alone. Uh, so when I find myself in the process of being poured out from vessel to vessel, that emptying out of complacency and carnality and complaining, uh, uh, having people in situations and circumstances break my bottle uh, time and time again, uh, what do I say? I say, Jesus, I praise you. I, I've just learned, Brother Kenny. I've, I've learned it's not going to be always easy. <laughs> Get some rest, Pastor. <laughs> well, thank you for that. <laughs> Go home, get some rest. I've learned, Brother Kenny, God's going to keep breaking me over and over and over again. He's going to keep stretching me. You know, I've went into situations here at this church that, man, it's made me uncomfortable. Uh, Lord, how are we going to take care of this? You know, preaching four funerals. Hey, that, that's uncomfortable. Preaching funerals of people you don't even know. That's uncomfortable. Walking into hospital rooms of people that you don't even know. That's uncomfortable. Brother Tony, I don't mean to single you out. I'll never do this again. But I remember when I came down to see Margie the first time in the hospital, you scared me to death. I looked at Tony and I heard him start talking and I got intimidated because I thought this guy's done everything under the sun. He's set with, I mean, he's been this close to, to, to high up people in governments. Uh, this guy's run companies. Uh, he's, he's talking. And, and, and I thought, man, uh, I, I don't know what to say. There's nothing I can tell this guy that he don't already know. Uh, but you know what God was doing, Brother Tony? He was shaking me up. Uh, he was moving me from this vessel to that vessel because he said, there's a man right there uh, that I believe uh, that you can touch with your testimony. There's a man right there uh, that wants to, to do something for God. Uh, and I believe that you can say something to him uh, and help him uh, and, 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 and let a sweet aroma come out of your life uh, that will help change his life. Uh, I'm telling you, folks, uh, uh, we got to get uncomfortable. And folks, when I say Jesus praise you, that empowers me to be filled with Christ, filled with compassion, filled with his consecration. Uh, Lord, nobody understands what I'm going through but you. No counselor can fix it but you, Lord. They didn't do it to me, Lord. You're doing it. You understand it. So Jesus, plow through all my feelings. Uh, bulldoze through all of my flesh. Uh, and I stand before you, Jesus. Uh, I bless your name for taking me and blessing me. Now you're breaking me. Uh, and glory to God, uh, uh, you are letting me be so filled with the Spirit of God uh, that I can affect everybody around me. And sm the smell of God is all over me. As somebody comes to the music. You know, we have no idea many times of the odor that we give off. Now, I know somebody's going to take that in a direction and have a little fun with that. But as a believer, resting in Christ, praising Him for everything, I want us to understand wherever we walk, we're giving off this aroma. A sweet smelling aroma. But you know, when I revert to saying fooey on all this and I don't like this, I'm staying home from church on Wednesday night. See, Joey's looking around. He's, he tries to start the crab leg ministry on Wednesday nights. I still love you, Joey. Or we say, I'm not going to read the Bible. I don't feel like praying. That's not changing anything. And we start complaining. You know what happens? That beautiful aroma turns to a stench. You know what I found? Even physically, when you start stinking, nobody wants to be around you. The odorant's cheap, folks. But I'm telling you, the price has already been paid for what Jesus wants to exude out of your life. It's a beautiful aroma. 
And in that instant, when we just say, Lord, in this situation and what I'm going through, I'm going to praise you. John chapter 12, verse 3, it, it tells us and describes when that woman poured out all that she had before Jesus. It said the house was filled with the fragrance of that oil. So I'm saying today, what if we filled this house with a sweet-smelling aroma to the Lord? What if this week something as simple as a little pie that says, taste and see that the Lord is good. What if you were to put that into a hand of a man or woman of God that was just exuding that sweet-smelling aroma from the Lord? It's not going to be the pie that makes the difference. That may get the door open for you, get my door open. But when you hand it to them out of a loving heart and say, I want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. He's been so good to me. He's blessed me. He's blessed my family. Time and time again, when I should have been dead and laid on the side of the road, he's opened up a door for me. I'm telling you, we can praise him. It doesn't matter what situation we're in. We can find something to say, Lord, I'm just going to give you the, the praise. And I have found even when I feel like, man, I don't have something to praise about. If I'll just go ahead and praise him anyway, I'll get so happy. I'll start realizing there are so many things in my life I can just rejoice to him about. And if I can't rejoice about anything else, I can rejoice that he died on a cross. He took care of the biggest problem in my life. He saved me from my sins. And now I have a freedom to talk directly to my Father, which is in heaven. And I'm telling you, when you do that, there's going to be a sweet-smelling aroma that comes out of your life. So I'm challenging you this week. You say, I ain't taking one of them pies out there. Well, you go ahead. I ain't reading. I ain't praying. I ain't seeking God. I, I ain't coming early for prayer. I ain't coming to this or that. I am not doing that. It's not making a difference. You're starting to stink. And I'm saying, let him stir you up. You see, all that stuff that's settling to the bottom, he wants to stir it up. He wants to pour it out of your life from vessel to vessel to vessel. I'm going to tell you, you're going to be stirred up all the time. You say, is that, is that what's wrong with you, Brother John? I am. I stay uncomfortable all the time. Courtney was getting ready for this big message uh, uh, that she was going to take uh, to the young people in Myrtle Beach. Uh, and man, she was going through all this stuff. And I, I could see the stress on your face. I thought, just settle down, Courtney. He's stretching you. He's stretching you. He's making you uncomfortable, but something's going to happen uh, if you'll just keep seeking him. Uh, you know what happened? Four people walked down an aisle and gave their heart and life to Jesus Christ yesterday. I'm telling you. God wants to do that with you and your life. You don't know what's going to happen this week when you walk to a door uh, with a little pie that you prayed over and you said, I want you to taste and see that the Lord is good. I, I, I've got an answer in my life. It's Jesus Christ. Uh, I want to witness to you. I want to show you Jesus. Uh, I want to take you to a place uh, that lifts up the name of Jesus. Uh, I want to take you to a place uh, uh, where you can meet him for yourself. And I'm saying when I lift up and bless his name and I allow my life to be poured out vessel to vessel, I stir up the gifts and the grace of God in my life. I'm telling you, there's a sweet aroma that's going to come. I hope when this community walks by this church, it's just like an aroma that's coming out of this place. If you needed this message today, I want you to just come down and join me. We're going to do things a little different today. But if you needed this, I want you to just come join me. If you're not able to, that's okay. But if you're physically able, I want you to just come and join me. We're going to worship him together for a few moments. Those of you that have lost anything that has brought you sorrow, I'm going to tell you something today, and you may not like it, but you didn't lose it. He took it. It's all his. If you're facing physical ailments today, God is saying, I can work through all of this. I need some people that'll say, I'm going to praise him. 
God's saying, I need somebody to recognize me and see my hand in it. Pastor, I, I just don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. Your flesh and your feelings will always be your enemy. Ray, I want you to c come through here. Come, come down here. You see what's happening here? Now, God gifted Ray with a body to play football. But you see what he had to do to get down here? He had to weave his way through. All these people, all the flesh, all the feelings. That's what I'm telling you. You're going to have to do it. Tommy, when you said, Pastor, you look tired, four words, it came to pass. The situation in your life, four words, it came to pass. And I'm saying this morning, come and let him pour you out from vessel to vessel. Let his scent come out of you this week. Right now, we're going to pray. Whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, listen, God's in the works. He's in the arrangements. He's doing it all. You said the devil's after me. He'll always be after you. But why don't you just take a few moments and praise the Lord and say, God, I'm going to just say you're in this. I'm going to have faith enough to say, God, you're doing this. And while you're doing this, I'm going to praise you for it. It may not feel good. I may not see you in it. I may not know what to do next. But I'm going to praise you and say, God, I believe that you're doing this right now. Yes. Let's just worship him this morning. As they come, we're going to pray all over this building, whatever you're going through. Why don't you just take a moment and lift your hands and say, Lord, you're in it. You're in it. Whatever it may be. Some of you are dealing with physical ailments. Some of you are dealing with aging parents you're having to take care of. Uh, some of you are going through situations in your job, uh, in your finances, uh, whatever it may be. Some of you have experienced loss of late. Uh, but why don't we raise our hands and say, God, uh, I know you're in it. Uh, so break me, Lord. Uh, oh, pour me out uh, into another vessel, Lord. Uh, stir up those things inside of me uh, this morning all over this building. Let's begin to pray.
but give me Jesus. Amen. How many has got Jesus today? Hallelujah. Whatever he's doing right now, just say, Lord, I know it's you. You're making me a little uncomfortable. But I'm telling you, an uncomfortable church is a happy church. I'm glad he's dealing with us. I'm glad he's stretching us. I'm glad that things are moving in our lives where we are going to have to say completely, Lord, I trust you. You know, there are things happening in the lives of people. Just look around next to you. There are things happening right now in somebody's life. They don't know what to do next. I tell you what, I, I believe what we need to do next is just raise our hands and worship him. Lord, we just thank you today. Lord, whatever it is in the life of somebody today, I believe you're my healer. I believe you're my provider. I believe you're my deliverer. And Lord, I believe as a child of God, the Bible tells me you're ordering my steps. You said the steps of a righteous man, they're ordered by the Lord. And Lord, I pray I want to delight in your way. Whatever it is, God, I'm going to praise you. When it's hard, I'm going to praise you, Lord. And I pray let this be a church, Lord God, of people that may be uncomfortable at times. But Lord, we're going to worship and praise you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. What smells going to come out of you this week? And I know basketball team, y'all can have fun with that when Jackson gets back. Your dad said, what smell is going to come out of you this week? But what I'm saying is what aroma is going to waft out of your life up to heaven this week? When we walk out of this place today, and Courtney, I'm going to have you come and pray today. Because this, this was her idea. She felt impressed about this. You know, we do a lot of trying to outreach for people in this church. And I know last year we gave away uh, several dinners, you know, that were ready to be prepared to families to try to help them. And uh, we were in a staff meeting one day, and Courtney said, you know, I don't want to just hand people food. I, I, I want to introduce them to the one who can feed them. And she said, so we're going to just get together these pies. You got 200 of them out there, right? 200 pies. Just look at those pies that it represents somebody's life. And we are going to invite 200 people to be in our service next week. Not only are we going to feed them next door, we're going to give them a good meal. So if all you're coming for is the meal, come on, okay? But I believe we're going to feed them right here in this place. Our, our state bishop, Bishop Richard Martin, is going to be here with us. He's going to be preaching. And we're going to have an awesome day in the Lord. So I'm going to turn it over to Courtney and let her pray. As you go out into this lobby, I want you, as we pray this final prayer, to say, Lord, how many of these do I need to grab? You know, you may want to take five. You want to, may want to take three. But I want God to personally, I don't want this to just be a random thing. I don't want you to just say, hey, uh, I threw a pie in your mailbox or whatever. I want God to place somebody on your heart so when you pick up that gift to take to them, you know that it's appointed. And I want you to go and share life with them and encourage them to be with us next week that God could cause them to pour out their life before him. Um, I love this message today and the thought of pouring out from vessel to vessel. And um, those of you who know us, I love connection. Now, I like to say that I am a um, very extroverted introvert. I do enjoy my alone time, but there's nothing like the love and the embrace that you get from a friend and from people. Man. And we have a world. Yes. We have a community who needs connection. Man. People are longing for connection. Um, I want to say this, this ball team that's here, we have Coach Solomon, and I'm sorry, Amen, Coach. Coach Gant. Am I right, Coach Gant? Am I right? Okay. So they're here with us, and I just have to say this this morning. If you will take and put Jesus at the forefront of everything that this ball team does, you're going to be successful no matter what. Amen. Amen. Because it's not really a, it, we want to win, obviously. 
But everything you do, whether you realize it or not, you're discipling. You're connecting with young men. You're discipling these young men, and they're watching everything you do. And so you have an opportunity to pour from vessel to vessel. And hopefully Jeremiah and Tyler, what you pour into them, they're going to pour it into another vessel, into another vessel. And that is how we win the world for Christ. Amen. Amen. And so it's not about a pie. We're going to pray over these pies that the Lord would bless and the Lord would help us plant a seed. It's not about the pie. It's about the you that gives the pie. More, more than that, it's about the Jesus in you that gives the pie. Join with me as we pray over these today. Heavenly Father, Lord, I just praise you, Lord, for all that you've done for us today. God, you are so good, Lord. And I just thank you for your presence in my life, Lord. I thank you for who you are to me. And God, I pray today, Lord, as we go about into this community and we pass out these these little sentiments of love and these sentiments, Lord, of just appreciation and a good little treat to eat, Lord, let it be more than that. God, I pray, Lord, that you would help us reach our community through this outreach. God, I pray, Lord, that you would lay someone on our hearts right now, God, just lay someone on our heart. God, that we are supposed to give it to. Lord, help us to connect with people, Lord, so that they may see you in us, so they may smell that sweet aroma of Jesus in us, Lord, so much that it draws them to the table, God. Lord, I pray that you will do the work that only you can do. Do the work, God, that that only you can do. And we love you and we praise you, God, for all you've done for us. Uh, Before you're dismissed today, just a couple quick announcements. Um, The Children's Choir for Christmas program is, they are going over songs right now, right at the end of this service. So if you have a student or a child that is in children's ministry, let them stay and join and have a part in this. It's going to be great. And they enjoy it. They like being able to come up here, and we like being able to see them. So um, there's going to be practice right now, and that's going to be in the, the children's wing also for Christmas program practice that is today at six o'clock we're allowing time for the young people to get back from youth retreat so we're gonna we're gonna let them get back and then we're gonna put them right to work it's good for them isn't it and so don't forget whoever the Lord has laid on your heart one two three four five however many you stop back there by the booth and grab the pie to give away pastor and I love you and we appreciate you. And tell, tell your friends and those around you how much you love them and appreciate them. And y'all have a great afternoon. You're dismissed. Take that sweet aroma.